let's talk a little bit about how you can use a, a well-balanced system to optimize your pump, plus save energy overall through the system by making sure that you have the correct flow going to the entire system. Um, right now, the way my system is set up, I have basically an unbalanced system. This will simulate not having any balancing valves at all. So I have all these open wide, as wide as they can go. And even though I have a design flow of 2 GPM, uh, you can see that I have everything pretty well overflowing. Uh, this one is overflowing by about 20%, and the rest are overflowing by more than 100%. Now, what does that result in? Is wasted energy. You're basically flowing water that you don't have to. And this can be seen by looking at our watt meter for our pump operation. Right now, we're getting a, a wattage of 178. So it's a lot of power just to be able to try to get uh, 2 GPM to each of three coils. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to basically statically balance the system. So we're going to introduce the balancing valves, and we're going to balance the system to our design flow. So what I'm going to do is proportionally balance it. So I'm going to set everything so they're at equal levels of overflow. And then I'm going to use a partner valve to set my, my final flow. Turn the partner valve down. Now, all of my coils are at the, my 2 GPM design flow. Now, now that everything's balanced, I'm flowing what I should, the system's getting the energy it should. What did that do to our energy usage? Look at that again. Now, instead of being at 178 watts, we're now at 130 watts. So we've reduced a significant amount of energy usage just by balancing our system, by, by, adding, by adding balancing and correctly establishing the flow rates where they need to be for, per design. Now, let's go back to the unbalanced case and use pump optimization to at least get our, our index coil to the point that it needs to be for design flow. So right now, I'm a, back in the unbalanced state. So I'm overflowing by about 10, 15% on the index coil, and then much greater amounts on my other two coils within my branch. So in this case, I'm going to ramp my pump down. And about 90% should about get us there. So now you can see I'm at my design flow for my index coil, but I'm still overflowing on my two other coils, but just by doing pump optimization with an unbalanced system. The benefit of doing that in terms of energy, I'm at 137 watts now. But you'll notice I'm still overflowing the system. I'm still moving more, more liquid than I have to. Let's talk about how we can good, use good system balancing incorporated with pump optimization to significantly reduce our energy costs. Um, in this exercise, we're going to use proportional balancing, and then we're going to use a differential pressure controller across the supply and return side of the, the branch that we're balancing in order to be able to establish the, the design flow rate. But then we're going to show that even with the differential pressure controller valve, you can still do pump optimization to reduce your energy costs even further. So again, I'll start with proportional balancing, bringing everything to the same amount of overflow. And then we'll now activate our differential pressure controller, and that'll bring us to our design flow rate of 2 GPM. Now, we can go a step further. Right now, the system's balanced. It's operating exactly the way it should be. Um, but we can go one step further because now, since we're only using the flow that we need, I can ramp the pump down to where it needs to be set just to produce that flow, and that's it. So we're coming over here to our pump adjustment. In this case, I'm going to turn it down to 80%. Ramp ramping down the pump. You'll see the differential pressure controller will adjust itself, but you'll wind up still back at our original design intent flow. But now, 
we're only doing at an energy cost of about, energy usage of about 74 watts. 